If you're a Disney fan, you're probably wondering why the Walt Disney Company has been making so many terrible movies lately. And you might also be wondering, if this isn't working, why does Disney keep doing this? I have a theory on that. It has often been said that the best artists create for their audience, whereas the worst artists create for themselves. I've seen this quote applied to many different situations across the internet, but the one we're going to be focusing on today is the Walt Disney Company. I am a huge fan of Walt Disney. In fact, he's a huge inspiration to me growing up. When I was a kid with a stop motion camera and some Lego people, I kind of wanted to be the next Walt Disney. From his work creating beautiful cartoons with engaging characters to his aspirational films with great heroes, Walt Disney built an amazing reputation, and his company continued that reputation up until recently. The Disney company used to hold the highest standard for quality animation and film, but that is no longer the case. In the year of 2023, the Walt Disney Company released 12 major films. These movies had high hopes and an even higher budget, but these wishes perhaps should have been made on a different star. The Walt Disney Company was strapping their hands, arms, legs, and feet in the ride for a bumpy ride through 2023. For example, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania spent $193.2 million and netted $81.9 million. That may seem like a lot of money, but that's still 43% of the budget. In the end, they still lost $111.3 million. That's a lot of money. In fact, this is one of the biggest losses for the Walt Disney Company to date. Later that year, the Walt Disney Company would release the fifth installment of the newly acquired Indiana Jones franchise. And we all know how that turned out. Many Indiana Jones fans, like me, were stoked for this movie's release. The film, however, was a massive disappointment. With an impressive budget of $294.7 million, it returned only $174.4 million. While still a better ROI than Quantumania, this is still quite a hit. That's a 60% net loss. The only thing this film really had going for it was an established reputation. The Indiana Jones franchise has had more recent success with box office audiences as opposed to the Marvel franchise. Speaking of Marvel, The Marvels was released last year with a budget of $274.8 million and netted $84.5 million at the domestic box office. The 30% ROI was devastating to the Walt Disney Company, and they needed to think of something quickly to get them out of this hole, especially in lieu of the company's 100th anniversary. The answer to this problem came in the form of a strange movie called Wish. With an estimated budget of $200 million, the movie generated $105.5 million in box office revenue. On top of the already crushing 52% ROI, the Walt Disney Company was facing allegations of using AI to write the script for Wish. And if you watch the movie, it's not hard to see why these accusations may prove credible. So now, the obvious question on everyone's lips is, what happened? How could a production company, a beloved production company like the Walt Disney Company, fail so miserably at creating content that the audience loves. It's no secret that I am especially skeptical of marketing. Throughout the last series of short animations I created, the common thread was nefarious lies beneath a family-friendly exterior. In my time as an intern, as a specialist, and as a coordinator, I've seen a lot of things in the marketing industry that I think are really wrong turns. I think the modern approach to marketing is bankrupting a lot of companies, and Disney is no exception. The trend I've noticed is that marketers tend to create for themselves, and I think this is bleeding into the Disney company. But before I get too far into my theory, I need to introduce a concept in marketing called the persona. A persona is a representation of the ideal customer. It usually comes in the form of a document detailing the psychographic, geographic, and demographic characteristics of the target audience. It also associates a name and a face to that group. Essentially, it's a made-up person that helps the marketer relate to the consumer in a better way. These personas are useful, but in the end, they're still fictional. They're made up. Personas are widely used in marketing today, so it may surprise you that it actually had its origins in software development. A software developer in 1985 named Alan Cooper created personas as a means of understanding the difficulties of customers to use his software. He interviewed dozens of people and consolidated them into one persona, a fictional character named Kathy. This concept got popular with marketers in the 1990s and has been used ever since. I myself have worked with personas a great deal in my experience in marketing. At one company I worked at, I was asked to present a couple personas that someone else on my team had created. When I looked over the slide deck, I felt like the personas being conveyed weren't really consistent with the customer data that I had seen at that point. 
It was a very masculine product with a masculine audience, and the persona was feminine. This mismatch was very confusing to me, needless to say, and it seemed like more of a reflection of the person who made the persona rather than the customer the persona was supposed to represent. Over the course of my research, the problem that I've noticed is that these personas really aren't based in data. Companies that can't afford the time to get to know their audience start inventing one. In fact, these personas aren't really reflective of reality at all. Based on what I've observed with Disney, it seems like it could be the case that these mismatches between the contents that the audience likes and the content that they're producing could be explained through personas. Going back to the Indiana Jones situation, I can safely say as an Indiana Jones fan that what I wanted was an aspirational action hero story, you know, like the original ones. What I didn't want was one in which the movie takes a massive dump on the main character that everyone loves and replaces him with a significantly less likable main character. And I'm not the only one saying this. You can look all over the internet and you'll find people saying a similar thing. The fans didn't like this movie. And that's the problem. Disney just isn't catering to their fans anymore. Their fans want what Disney used to stand for, which is a family-friendly animation and film company. It seems like what they're targeting now is hyper niche because it's only the type of content that the marketers and producers want. And if my theory is correct that personas are all to blame, everything makes sense. So here's to Disney in 2024. Let's hope that they get back to making content that the audience loves. And before you go, let me know in the comments below what you think. Is this the result of personas? If so, how can this be addressed? If my theory is correct, then maybe Persona Mismatch is also responsible for all the terrible marketing decisions we see on a daily basis. And as always, if you like this type of content, please feel free to drop a like and subscribe to this channel. I'm relatively new to YouTube, but I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the month. As a creator, I want to make content that you, my audience, likes. Your subscription is telling me that I'm doing something right. And if you didn't like this video, then I give you my permission to leave a dislike on this video because I, unlike Disney, value your feedback. Thank you for watching. Stay hydrated.